Hello everyone. My name is Zubair Ahmed Khan. I am an assistant professor in USLLS GCS Happy University. The topic of module, my module is responsibility and liability for environmental law and come under the subject uh, of environmental law. You might have covered in different and might have studied different modules related to environment. This is one of the module where we are going to discuss about the environmental harm, we are going to discuss about environmental harm or you can say environmental damage, environmental degradation, we are going to discuss about the international perspective of this environmental harm and how it has affect uh, the society and how it has affect the world. So keeping in mind the same thing, we are going to discuss the different opinion, the different kinds of environmental harm. So be it with, a, with respect to the environment, uh, the pure in any environment, be it with respect to the oil spill or we can say the oil pollution or whether in the case of outer space or whether in the case of nuclear installations or where, whether in the case of you see uh, the use and uh, application of hazardous substance. So when discussing these things, we will discuss other perspective which is as we mentioned in our Indian constitution also and what is the opinion, what is the role of judiciary in tackling these issues about of environmental harm. Now let's start with the introduction part. What do you mean by environmental harm? The moment when it talks about environmental harm, it basically the first important point is that is it is a kind of a serious level of deterioration of the environment. Now when you talk, when moment when you are talking about that, that this is a deterioration of the environment, obviously the second thing which you have to come across, what is the adverse implications of these environment, of these uh, environmental degradations. So when you are talking about adverse implication, obviously it is upon the habitats and it is also about the native anima, animals also. Third important feature which is important in this situation that it has become, uh, it has, it has a potential to harm and to adversely affect to the health and safety of living beings. So these are the three ways, these are the three situations where we can, we can, we can identify that these are, uh, they have become an, a part and parcel of environmental harm or environmental, environmental damage. But there are other issues which we have to understand this environmental law of that is against the, uh, that is against the principle of uh, the legislation which has been mentioned in uh, throughout the world also. So at the national level or at the international level, we have recognized that this environmental harm can be against the law in two ways. One, if there is a breach of requirement, if there is a breach of requirement to the legislation. Second, when there is a breach of other people's common right also. So that means in all those situations, the violation of the specific legislation or there is a violation of the right of the individual right of the citizens, right of the communities who are living uh, in a particular area is there. So there you can say that's how the environmental harm can come into pictures. So these are the two ways in which it can be against the law. There is another issues which we have to refer that what are the issues related to environmental damage and even with respect to tackling these issues in the protection also. For that perspective, we have to look upon what is the constitutional basis which is there in our country especially. So when we refer, in our country, when we refer Article 48A of the Constitution, we have observed that where it is clearly mentioned that the state has a specific duty to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forests and the wildlife of the country also. Now this particular article 48a plays a very important role altogether, but at the same time state uh, on, on, upon whom the obligation has been imposed cannot able to solve all the issues altogether related to environment. So of all those environment co complexities, it is also very much required that there must be a specific duty which can be imposed upon citizen. So that is why article 51a of the constitution has been framed in this manner also where a duty of the citizen is mentioned that and what is the duty mentioned? The duty is to protect and improve the natural environment also. It also it includes natural environment includes forests, lakes, rivers, wildlife and even to, uh, to protect or to pro protect for the uh, living resources which is there. So that is how this article 48a and article 51a plays a very important role as a matter of fact by the state who has a particular obligation and the country and the, uh, and the person who has a particular obligations. So this is a kind of collective responsibility in dealing with the issues. 
So this is what our constitution has referred, but this is not the only way where we can refer. When you look upon the international perspective, obviously the first point which has become across that is the Rio, uh, Rio Declaration, principle number 2 and principle number 21 of Stockholm Declaration. These two conventions talk about one particular point that is the state can exploit their natural resources as per the environmental policies. They, uh, their major responsibility is to ensure that these activities does not cause any damage. So you see there it's talking about there is a limitation, they are talking about limitation to a, up to a specific limit that they can exploit the natural resources for the commercial purpose. But beyond a specific limit they cannot do it and even if they do then in those cases they need to find alternative mechanisms so as to draw a fine balance, so as to draw an equilibrium. So these are the two principles which has been referred in these issues. Now when while observing the constitutional Indian constitutional perspective or while observing these two conventions either mentioned in Stockholm or Rio declarations, we need to know what are the major causes of environmental harm. When, in, when we identify the areas, when we introspect overall, we identify that there are four ways, there are four uh, main causes of the environmental harm. First one is that is the discharge, huge discharge of uh, of the quantity of gases which is totally has been released and which there is no particular control on these issues. Second one is the rise in the deforestation also. This deforestation which has become again for the purpose of commercial purpose has become a very serious matter, it is a matter of serious concern not only for the state but, the, but for the forest dwellers also. Who, uh, whose, whose livelihood is dependent upon the foreign produce and overall forest areas also. Third important factor which is the major cause of this environmental harm that is the unregulated mining, unauthorized mining also. This unregulated mining is again and it's an area which has been neglected altogether by many developing countries but later on when due to, uh, due to pressure it has been realized that it has created a soil, soil erosion or it can damage the environment uh, also. So that's why this is also seems to be considered as one of the major cause of the environmental harm. Fourth feature where that is the chemical effluents also. Now this chemical effluents is little different from the uh, gases also. Sometimes there are certain uh, waste, there, there are certain hazardous waste which comes or which has been released accidentally or deliberately by many industrialists by many while uh, handling these substance. So that's how they also be, uh, become a, one of the major cause for the environment, uh, environmental damage. Now while observing these are the causes of this environmental harm. We also have to look upon one of the important uh, commission which have referred upon this environmental harm while fixing the liability and responsibility also and that is the international law commission while dealing with the liability and responsibility of the environmental harms. Now this international law commissions has addressed many issues altogether where they have said that they have uh, they are talking about international liability, they are also talking about the preventive mechanisms also to deal with the transboundary effect, adverse effect of this environment. Now due to the commercial activities, so you see we have realized that this is not only this environmental damage or environmental harm is not only limited to boundary of a one state, it is something which can go beyond the jurisdiction of state also that is why it has been referred in this particular convention that is the transboundary adverse effect. And you see when this particular point which is mentioned, one it has it is quite obvious for the international law commissions to impose a, risk, a serious responsibility upon the state to preserve the uh, ecosystems for the international water course and for the marine world also. So this particular convention they are talking about when, when you are talking about the preservation of environment, one thing which is important that is the accountability also. And why the accountability is important? The accountability is very much uh, accountability of the state actions and the accountability of the commission, uh, the private actions done by the commercial, uh, this, uh, commercial uh, industries, commercial enterprises. It is very much important to fix the liability and fix the national as well as the international liability of the environmental damage. Now when these issues has been come into picture, obviously this issue has been raised time and again that whenever state allows certain bodies, certain authorities uh, to, the, uh, to do the commercial acti activities, there in those situations it is very much important for the commercial enterprises that they need to take a prior approval of the state.
Now, while the, why the prior improvement is very important here, the prior improvement is very much important here, so that the state can assess the environmental risk which is involved in its commercial activities. The, the court, uh, the, the state can assess the, the overall uh, impact, imp environment impact assessment or rather can say the social impact assessment of these issues also. So that's why these things which has become into picture. So where we have referred one thing that the assessment is very much important. So it is there, this, in this particular convention or commission, this point has been mentioned that the, there is a need to introspect the potential risk which is involved in each and every activity so that we can utilize whether the approval should be given or not also. So this, that's how in this particular convention they have referred about environmental issues and where they also referred about the environmental sustainability and this environmental sustainability will obviously come when you fully utilize environmental impacts assessment also.